RP Boo. What's good, Sus, man? I'm all good here. Man, G, it's, it's been a long time coming, you know. And the interview's been long overdue this time, you know, from the last time we talked, you know. We didn't get into too much detail from the Millennium Park, from, you know. Last year. Yeah, last song. So, how things been going, RP? You know, tell the world what's been going on for you. Know. So far, still making the music. Never stop that. Just work, living every day as a normal human being. For those a normal human being, is just getting up, going to work, take care of the family. And that's something I was doing before I started DJing. So, I just let y'all know DJing is just my hobby and making tracks is just a hobby. Also. So, question What made you first? DJ, like, what made you start the career of DJing before, you know? I understand you used to football for House of Maddox, and then you had your own group called D-Dynamic, am I right? So Yeah, D-Dynamic was more of a uh, uh, trial basis, but that's still the company that I got. I gave the dance group then a uh, uh, try. But what got me into it, I was more of a person that listened to music. And my uncle used to play... WBMX uh, with Farley, Jack Master, Funks, and House, uh, House Mix 5 back in the day. So I was just tuning in and listening to it. It was something different because it was like non stop dance music. But it was once I started seeing it live in action, I just wanted to pursue my career to just try it and give it a try. So that's what kind of put me out there. That's what's up. So tell me about. The years with House of Maddox, like I understand you come from the early era of, you know, dance groups like House of Maddox, House of Rest 2, and k 59 u 5 u So what was your experience full working and dancing along with with one of the most memorable groups that's, you know? To me, the, 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 the there's two groups I guess props to. First group is Mega Move. Mega Move. Mega Move was a guy named Jimmy Darren Williams. He was a member from House of Maddox, but he started his own group years later and gave an experiment song. I was fresh out of high school, and I ain't gonna say the year, but fresh out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> and I was uh, working first job was uh, actually Showbiz Pizza, which then turned into Chuck E. Cheese. So I actually worked for the, the same company as the name changed. I was still there. And I took my money and was buying equipment out of high school and got good at doing editing and making tapes. So doing the performance tapes. So one day when the guy was like, man, you need to come on and try to get into this dancing. So I got into the dance, but never knew how I would get into it and what it would turn out to be. So after a couple of years doing that, I say I saw House of Magic for the first time at King King College when it was on 68th and uh, Whitworth. And the routine that we did was actually a House of Magic routine that somebody else bought and showed us. So they was like, well, we're not gonna perform. So as the performance took place, they like House of Magic go perform. And the routine that we, did it was there. When I first saw those dudes dance, that t that day it was like I had to get in. <laughs> so after that, that's why I credit it. But after that, it took me another three years to go to the house of Magic because it was more of do I want to go? Because all these allegations that I was here and the style that they was supposed to be living, I didn't like it. So basically, you was trying to figure out if you was determined to be with House of Mass at the time, am I right? Right, and plus I was still working. Okay. And so it was like, I'm not gonna quit my job to go do this. But House of Magic was more of, I came in, I didn't come in with an expectation to say what was going to happen. I just came because I wanted to try something different and be around a different environment. And within the the first day I went to House of Magic, it was on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I handed them a tape. That same day, a girl come past and she listened to his tape. So back then, it was more of DJs presenting tapes only. This the South Side presenting tapes only, and the only people that was presenting tapes was Dion and Milton. 
So if you're on the mail, we'll just give you a tape from how somebody say, here you go. If it's a track or something on there, they like the mix, they perform to that. So this girl I'm like, man, that's a nice, nice tape. Dion did that, he like, nah, got a new member. Mm -hmm. did it. Wait, yeah, that tape on point. <laughs> so they just grabbed the mix was all that good. Right, so, but it was, I wasn't making tracks. Well, which brings me to my next one. Like, when did you start making your first official track? 90, uh, 96. 96. It, it, was, it didn't have no name because other than that, I didn't have a sample. I just had a drum machine. And the drum machine that I had got was an R7. And I still use it today. Never went for something else. <laughs> Still used today. So other than that, I gave it a try because it was something different. And mm -hmm. I wanted to try something different. But I had already mastered DJ. And the first name I ever had for those that don't stand, it was B-Boy Juice. And the B stood for one thing. It was blends. And that's what I was known for. for I could blend you up under the table. And this was before you was called DJ Boo and RP. This was this is before DJ Boo. <laughs> and then when did DJ Boo came to pass? Like where did the Boo part come from? Oh, Boo is my uh, nickname from birth. So that's where that come from. And that's how it is. But now my brother gave me the name RP. That was in 90, 98 when I received that name. <laughs> okay, and that stands for record player Boo, am I right? right? So then, well. Then you made one point, it was the breakthrough track called the Godzilla track from like, when that like, 99? 99. And, and it was originally titled... 11-47-99. The 11 was for, the month was in November. 11, uh, 47 is the street we was on, 47 to Princeton, and 99 is the year. Wow. And to this day, still the biggest hit all over the country, even Detroit claiming their trap, but this is the originator. Even yeah. D Detroit would say that this is theirs because it was up under DJ Godfather's label. But Godfather know as well as DJ Sluggo, I'm the originator of that. Mm -hmm. And to clear things up for a lot of people that don't understand, it was a situation to where he asked me to give him some tracks. And I said, okay, cool. I gave him. 114799, I gave him this track called Sex Talks, and I gave him uh, Night and Day, which is, I was patient. A lot of people are still bugging off that too. And it got his credit, I got my credit for it. That made it, I got a test press copy of it, but then I was asked, could I have a remix? Slugger wanted to remix. Oh, okay. So I said, okay, cool, no problem with the remix. I gave him the uh, record, and he remixed it. But it was a problem came years about so hot when it got to the point to where the track just took off. The problem came that he took a couple of guys with him. And I'm not saying no names, but they was his guys. That's how the situation come back to what it was. He took claim for the whole originality of it. So that was the problem. And that's what it came to who really made this. Sluggo know I made the track. Okay. I gave him permission to remix it, but it was just, when I'm not there, another thing took place. So that's the, that's how that goes. Okay, then after the Godzilla track, I remember you telling me you did hella remix yourself after that, like, for a prime example, Heavy Heat. And I'm like, and then I just wanted to know, like, what makes you want to do your own remix of the original track that you made, like? Heavy Heat was actually the second one. You still ain't heard them. You, you still ain't heard the one that came after uh, 11.47.99. That one was got a uh, two in it because I actually did that uh, the week prior to the E2 event. And I did it and I, it's all, the sound was the same. But it switched up and it chopped up a little different. The beat is almost the same, but they tell two different stories. So I gotta make sure you get that. <laughs> All right, so within that note, you know, you see these footworkers now. Like, I see you grew up with footworkers, and I know you're looking at new generations coming up in the world, trying to make a name for yourself. Like, 
how do you feel like upcomers like myself or you know press for like tail squad creation habit you know tribe and all the other groups of today like, well i look at those you just named other than tribe Mm -hmm. But the, the, the heat squads, the creation, the tan squads, they still got cycles going on amongst themselves. But the original of them crew, they already, to me, they established. But they, they give it back and they teach it. It's just, uh, it's no place and no venue at this time to where they can really get the credibility to where it's at because it's within a circle. It's within their own circle where the problems occurs. So it's up to them to figure out what it is. But you have to really dig into the sources to say, well, what is it that I could do to be greater than what it is? It's, it's to stop, stop beefing with each other. Stop beefing with the other group. And please, if me and you walk from point A to point B, we know how to walk. If you if you walk with your pants hanging off your behind or whatever else, yeah, you got swag, but it's just how you swag with it. It's the same thing as you see somebody do a boo. Oh, he bit that boo. You you might say for instance, the, the person that that you did something to or they 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 pulled the boo, you say, yeah, I like that. That's how you just say, man, I like that. If he say, man, you can't steal it, you don't own nothing. The thing is, is that's how good you look at doing it. That's the problem. That's the part that's hey, but other than that, man, it's too much talent within this footwork industry to what, man. I'm still going to push for and say, man, y'all got to do y'all thing, man. All that beefing and whatever else. And the problem is, is where you at. It's what the venues you go to. Yeah. I noticed that because, you know, I always tell people, there's really ain't no such thing as buying a move. I mean, there's no limit to dancing, period. And, you know, dancing is limitless. It all depends on how you put it in within your craft at the end of the day. So. At the end of the day, I'm going to tell y'all something just like this. Okay. When they say, I'm a, you heard it from me. I'm going to tell you when the world is going to be over. When you don't hear music ever again. That's how you know the world is over with. So. It's the music, it's who we portray and who we are as artists with the music. Footwork and the way the tribes, the, 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 the heat squads, the, the real footworkers. Below zero. The Belize, below zero, the gutter thugs, the, the my boys back in the days, the you fight you. It's the music. That keeps y'all going. It's the music that keeps you going, but it's to why. Uh, the DJs and the producers that makes these tracks really have no place to house it to where it can really grow. That's the problem. And my thing is this, to all these promoters that's out here that's in this field, you know who you are, I know who you are. The thing is, I'm not gonna knock what you do. You give a lot of these people and these kids places to come and do their thing. That's the good part. But do not deal with the music if you're not doing it yourself. I don't care if I showed you how to do it, you're still not going to get it. Why? Because it starts with the music first. Everything else is relevant. It's so irrelevant to what you walk around here, flash and doing what you're going to do. I will support you. But when it comes time to somebody that's really going to do it, don't knock their hustle because they didn't knock yours. <laughs>